Okay, good afternoon. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, we're going to give you the latest update on Typhoon uh, Hagibis and its anticipated impact on this weekend's fixtures. Uh, on our top table, we have from left to right, Mick Wright, Executive Director, <coughs> Event Delivery for Japan Rugby 2019. Alan Gilpin, Chief Operating Officer for World Rugby and Tournament Director um, for World Rugby. Akira Shimazu, CEO, Japan Rugby 2019. Tomoharu Tsuruda, Executive Director, Commercial for Japan Rugby 2019. And Koji Horuchi, who's a risk communicator for Weather News, who are independent uh, weather experts. To get us underway, I'd like to invite Alan Gilpin, uh, to update with the latest information. Thank you. Konnichiwa, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us uh, here this afternoon. We appreciate it's been a busy time for you, as you can imagine it has been for us. After extensive evaluation of the latest detailed weather information, we are today confirming adjustments to this weekend's Rugby World Cup 2019 match schedule. As a result, of the predicted significant impact of Typhoon Hadjibis. This includes, regrettably, the decision to cancel matches on safety grounds. Based on this morning's information from our independent weather experts, Hadjibis is predicted to be the biggest typhoon of the 2019 season and is highly likely to cause considerable disruption in the Tokyo, Yokohama and city of Toyota uh, areas throughout Saturday, including likely public transport shutdown and disruption. As a result of the detailed independent advice from the weather advisors and given the scheduled public transport closures, we've taken the very difficult but we think right decision to cancel certain matches in the affected areas. As we briefed you before the tournament, for pool matches that do not go ahead as scheduled, these matches are cancelled and two points will be awarded to each team in line with tournament rules. Based on the latest detailed weather information we have, we can provide the following update. For tomorrow, Friday the 11th of October, the Pool D match scheduled between Australia and Georgia in Shizuoka, we expect to be played as scheduled. For Saturday the 12th of October, the Pool A match between Ireland and Samoa in Fukuoka, we expect to be played as scheduled. The Pool B match between New Zealand and Italy in the city of Toyota will be cancelled. The Pool C match between England and France at Yokohama Stadium will be cancelled. As you can imagine, the decision to cancel these matches has not been taken lightly and has been made with the best interests of team, public, tournament and volunteer safety as a priority, based on the expert advice and the detailed information we have available. We've been intensively working through a range of detailed contingency options in partnership with the host cities, the venues and the teams to try and ensure that any impacted matches had a fair chance of being played. However, the risks are just too challenging to enable us to deliver a fair and, consistency, a fair and consistent contingency approach for all teams and participants, and importantly, to provide confidence in the safety of spectators. All fans with tickets to those cancelled matches will receive a full refund. We are, of course, continuing to review Sunday's matches and making every effort to ensure that they will be played as scheduled. A thorough assessment of the venues will take place after the typhoon has passed before a final decision is made on Sunday morning. Based on the advice of the government authorities and the experts, World Rugby and the Japan Rugby 2019 Organising Committee are advising all fans in the Tokyo, Yokohama and City of Toyota areas to stay indoors on Saturday, not to travel and to keep monitoring the Rugby World Cup 2019 digital and social channels for further updates. Thank you.
Thank you, Alan. And I'd like to hand over to Akira Shimazu to say a few words. Akira. え、今アランがあ、お話した通りのことでございますけれども、ま、我々予想したことと今回検討してまいりましたが、今のアランの話のように最低限で ワールドカップ時代は順当に順調に推移してきておりましたので、こういうような状態になることは残念ではございますが、しかしその最小限にその影響を留めた上で、さらにその 13日日曜日の試合の開催に関して、に関しても、4試合が予定をされているわけでございますが、それぞれの会場について、詳細に今後検討した上、台風通過後ということになると思いますが、その安全性を十分に調査した上、試合開催の可否を直前、直前、その日
、そして12日のインパクトについてご説明申し上げますと、12日には、だんだんと特に東海、関東エリアを中心に、その25メートル以上の暴風域に入る可能性がある、そしてこの時期は大潮となってますので、東京湾周辺での高潮といった被害も想定されるので、このあたりを入念に皆様に情報をシェアしてまいりましたこちら3枚目のシートですけれどもこちらは台風15号とこちら現在の19号の大きさの違いです15号は9月の頭に千葉、東京に甚大な被害をもたらした台風ですこちらも勢力が強い状態で関東付近まで近づいてきました詳細な被害についてはここでは差し控えますがかなりの状況になりました画面右側の19号はそれよりもスケールが大きいつまり強風のエリアが大きいそして勢力も台風15号と同じかまたはそれより強い状況で東海関東のエリアに近づく可能性があるといったことが見込まれますそういったことから、昨日も気象庁,庁,庁,庁長ですね、失礼いたしますの方から、記者会見の方が取り行われましたが、そういった背景に今、日本があるといったような状況です。そういったことを踏まえまして、私どものウェザーニューズの独自の予報も含めて、気象庁の情報を含めて、皆様に正当な判断をしていただくための情報をお渡しした、これが背景でございます。以上ですアリガチカジさん。OK、I would like to open the floor to questions. As I said before, please raise your hand, wait for the microphone, introduce yourself and your organization before asking your question. Thank you very much. Yeah, just here. John Day from New Sub in New Zealand.、Uh, Alan, was there an option for the cancelled games to be moved to another venue or to be postponed and played at a later date? Thanks, John. Yeah, look, we. We looked pretty exhaustively over the last few days at all of the options.、Um, I think it's important to, to say and to note that where we are now in terms of cancelling matches is, is entirely in accordance with what we laid out before the tournament. The matches in the pool phase wouldn't be postponed or, or relocated.、Um, as we looked at maybe making exceptions to that, what became clear is that doing that on the scale of this final weekend with so many matches in, involved. Potentially by being impacted, so many teams to move around、uh, the country to do that. And also being able to deliver safely plans to exit 12 teams from Japan、uh, after the pool phase. We couldn't, we couldn't guarantee consistent contingency plans across those games safely for all of the teams and the, and the fans involved. And, and that's why reluctantly we had to come to the decision that if we can't do that consistently for all of the matches impacted, we shouldn't be looking at doing it for any of them. Next question, please. Yeah, just at the back. James Cole, Sky News.、Um, given that you're hosting a World Cup in typhoon season, any regrets given what's happened here? And are there questions now as to whether you have robust enough contingencies? Yeah, thanks, James. No regrets、um, at all. I think what you've all seen over the last three weeks absolutely in every respect vindicates the right decision to be here hosting a World Cup in Japan. Incredible tournament on and off the field.、Um, we always knew there were going to be risks.、Um, it's rare for a typhoon of this magnitude to, to cause this impact this late in the typhoon season.、Um, we had robust plans, and as I say, Um, the plans that we're implementing now are in accordance with our plans for the pool phase. We have a different set of contingencies for the knockout phase, and, and whilst it's regrettable, we've made, we believe, the right decision with, with everyone's safety as the priority. Afternoon, Alan. Derry Priest with TVNZ in New Zealand. Do cancelled games, or、well, these two and the ones tomorrow, risk undermining、um, the, you know, the, the last eight remaining teams in the competition and the competition going forward? 
We don't believe so. I think um, the tournament rules are, are not new to Rugby World Cup 2019. They've been the tournament rules uh, in the event of match cancellations for, for many previous Rugby World Cups. Pleasingly, we've never had to, to implement uh, those rules before. Um, the teams, obviously, that will, will make the last eight will be determined by the matches they've played and, and the implementation of these rules. So we don't think it undermines the quarterfinals at all. Hi, sorry, Andy Swiss from BBC News. Um, you mentioned that you would review the uh, conditions on Sunday for the Japan-Scotland game. Uh, if the conditions aren't safe or you're not happy with them, do you have any contingency to play that game, perhaps postponing it a day, perhaps moving it, bearing in mind the huge significance of that match and obviously the fact that it's a knockout game effectively for one of these teams? Thanks, Andy. We've looked again at, at the uh, potential to apply some kind of consistent contingency plan across all the games that could be affected this weekend and again it's important that we uh, we treat all those matches uh, consistently and fairly. I think it's important to remember Italy are in exactly the same position that Scotland are in. Um, the Japan-Scotland game clearly is a, is a huge match. We'd love to be playing that game. We will be working incredibly hard with our colleagues from Japan Rugby 2019, the host cities, and all the authorities on Sunday morning to do everything possible to see that match played. Um, but we won't treat that match, if it can't be played, any differently to the other matches. OK, just here in the centre. Thank you. Kyoto Tushin no Murakata desu. えっと、はい、すみません、日本戦については ということに着目して最新の気象状況等も見てそして開催としても良く協議した上でできるだけ早い時間に発表はしたいと思っております。Hi uh, Alan, here Simon Walzer from Media Olympic. I just wanted to know if you had any idea, any evaluation of the economic impact of these uh, cancellations, of these games cancellations, please. Thank you. Hi, Simon. We, we don't, to be honest, and, and it's not um, certainly been our focus in the last few days. Our, our focus, as you can imagine, has been, has been putting safety first, really concentrating on the contingency plans that we were, we were looking at. Can we deliver these games safely and consistently? The answer to that has been no, and, and that's led to this decision. We'll, of course, now get into discussions around the economic impact of that and, and where the insurance uh, providers that we work with will, will become part of those conversations. So that's for the future. Uh, hi, Alan McClure, The Telegraph. Um, there's been reports that England are about to decamp to Miyazaki. Are they allowed to do that in order to prepare for next week's knockout game? 
Hi Mick, thanks. Um, look, we're looking at movements with all the teams. Um, there are a number of options for the teams that are now affected and obviously for the four teams that are not now playing their games on Saturday, we're looking at how we can not only get them uh, to safety in the best way, but to the to the camps that will give them the best opportunity to continue to prepare. So they, they've got a number of options. Next question, please. Any more? Yep, just at the back. え、日本テレビの渡辺です。え、と先ほど日曜日のゲームは基本開催か中止かという風な話で伺いましたが、開催に関して通常の開催なのか、それとも例えば無観客みたいな形の限定的な開催になるのかという可能性はあるのかお
すいません朝日新聞の野村と申しますあの大会前から台風が来た時のために保険とかを作ったと思うんですけれどもそういうものがどのように適用されるのか先ほどアランが言ってたように経済的なあのダメージはないと言ってましたけどそういうところも関係してくるのか教えてください、えー、っとあの当然のことながら工業中止保険というものには加入をしておりますまあ、従って中止にしたとしても一定の割合でカバーされるということでございます。Okay. Just a back. Alan, just at the back Um, and secondly, I'm just interested to know whether the fact that a lot of the stadia that could have, the matches could have been held in have been de rigged and therefore don't have the branding and the, and the, and the sponsors and, and the World Cup logos, etc., around them. Was that a, an impact?、Uh, was, was that a factor in your decision not to move matches there? Thanks. So maybe I'll take those in, in reverse. I, I think on the first one, we looked at any、uh, available. Contingency options. Obviously, there are venues that we've used so far in the tournament that we no longer have available to us, and that, that is the case. We no longer have a number of those venues, whether it's Sapporo and other places, available to us. So, not, not a question of whether they've been de rigged or not, but, but simply not, not options for us. And actually, when you look at the scale and breadth of this potential typhoon, there are very few of the venues we've used that would have been available to us on, on, on Saturday as contingency. I think on the second question,、um, that's not conversations that we've begun yet with,、uh, with our broadcast partners. We're very fortunate to have a, a very kind of loyal、um, and strong set of partners who've been with us for many Rugby World Cups, and I think we'll have some, some appropriate and sensible conversations with them about what the impacts of these decisions have been for them. Okay, yeah. Just at the front there, Alex. Alan, Alex Bunk from the Mirror.、Um, With hindsight, is it a mistake not to have built more flexibility into the schedule to,、uh, to allow for, for this sort of eventuality? Thanks, Alex. I, I don't think so.、Um, the, the schedule, as you know, for Rugby World Cup is a, is a complex beast in its own right, very challenging. 40 pool matches in, in four weeks. Add to that the geography that we have、uh, in Japan and the movements you know, across not just the 12 host cities, but 50 team camps and team hotels. So、um, there is very little flexibility. Uh, that exists in a Rugby World Cup match schedule as a result, and that's why the tournament rules、um, are as they are,、um, and, and that's what we're applying now in this case. And as I mentioned, we've got some different opportunities if we have any similar impacts in the, in the knockout phase. Okay, we've got time for one more. Yep, Alex again.、Uh, sorry, just a follow up.、Um, did all the teams sign up to this beforehand? So you're not worried about, <coughs> say, for example, Italy, who could still mathematically. Qualify, you're not worried about kind of legal implications or anything else as a result? No, all, all the teams sign up to the participation agreement for the tournament, they're well aware of the, of the tournament rules, and, and therefore, no, that's not a concern for us. Thank you very much. As you'll appreciate, we've got quite a, little, quite a lot of work to do now,、um, so we won't be staying for one on ones.、Um, but thank you very much for your time, and、uh, see you soon. Thank you. <laughs>